So, uh, welcome everyone. In Indian economy, the most important topic that is making headlines everywhere in the recent uh, months is India's economic growth. What are the concerns that we see about uh, India's economic growth? And what kind of impact you see on Indian economy because of the COVID-19 pandemic? Friends, uh, generally a question on the GDP trends and the causes for the fall or growth, whatever, or what are the measures taken, being taken to promote push-up growth are always important. And this is fundamental to your understanding of Indian economy also. In the previous years, we do have uh, questions on these lines and it is all the more important this time because of the fact that you know the economy is under severe stress because of the COVID-19 and even before COVID-19 we do have a lot of concerns about uh, Indian economy and its growth. Okay, so as we speak today, interestingly, the GDP, what is GDP first of all? Of course, by now, most of us know about it, but let us start with the basic point. The gross domestic product is the total value of goods and services produced in a country in a given year. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, this is uh, both at constant, for example, in India it is 2011-12 prices and also current prices. Constant prices means we take a base year and apply the same uh, prices to calculate GDP, the cost of goods and services, the value of, uh, the value of production of goods and services, so that we are uh, negating the influence of inflation in the calculation. Current prices is actually at whatever are the prevailing uh, prices. Okay, so GDP is total value of goods and services produced in a country in a given year, and it is uh, measured generally in two times, two ways. One is constant and current, and of course that is also a concept of base year. The base year for us is 2011-12. That is how we need to uh, understand. So now, why is it that GDP is important? Friends, there is a very great debate on uh, growth and development. There are two concepts in economy, which is growth and development. For many years, you know, if you see right from the days of uh, Adam Smith's Wealth of Nations, okay, the focus has always been on uh, growth, the, the size of the economy or the, you know, the total value of uh, the, the quantum of goods and services that are produced in the economy. So that is simply a quantifiable growth, a quantifiable figure, figure is called as uh, GDP growth. But late 80s onwards, we also have a focus on development, that is economic development. The growth may be there, but the fruits of development may not reach to everyone. So that's why we have the concept of economic development, which is an all-round growth. The fruits of the growth or GDP growth is going to all sections. So that is that we can say uh, economic development. Of course, we have other human development, uh, sustainable development, or all these concepts. Well, let's not go into that. Now, the point is GDP is important on two counts. If we have some growth, then you can ensure development. Without GDP growth, how do you ensure development of all? There should be some growth. If you have some value, then you distribute. You ensure that it reaches properly. So growth is fundamental to any economy. And as far as a, a nation's economy, a, a country's economy, even Indian economy for that matter, GDP is always seen as important uh, criteria for investments, including uh, foreign direct investment and uh, other forms of investment. GDP growth is also important because it uh, leads to job creation and it leads to more and more production of uh, goods and services. It is in this context that we need to understand what are the recent uh, trends in India's GDP? So generally, in examination, you should always focus on uh, recent trends. Ideally, a minimum of uh, three to five years uh, you need to focus. Okay, because uh, if you want to compare, if you want to establish a trend, at least you need a CAGR of five years or uh, you need to have at least three years minimum. Now, because I don't want to uh, you know, put you, put you, your hard disk 
on a lot of stress so memory for memory what i trying to do is that i just give you uh, you know the three years uh, figures here including the current year which becomes the fourth year so let us try to establish a trend and see what are the causes and others so now india's economy is actually uh, is uh, significant you know we have world economic outlook of imf international monetary fund it estimated that india's economy is now the fifth largest in the world by using the measurement of uh, gdp at uh, current us dollar prices of course imf and others we talk about us dollar only because gdp is an international compar comparative uh, figure it is always better to express it in uh, dollars okay so in fact we are moving past united kingdom and france united kingdom is the country which had looted us thoroughly for almost uh, uh, you know 140 years you know if you, even if you say 1857 to 1940 actually they have completely looted us so but then india now is able to surpass united kingdom's uh, economy the size of economy is estimated at uh, 2.9 trillion dollars uh, sorry uh, us dollars uh, you know in 2019 definitely this is a good news uh, but there has been concerns as far as domestic economy is concerned we might be a good a, a big large fifth largest economy in terms of size but there are also concerns there are also concerns about its uh, uh, quantum of growth and also volatility you know volatility is we we don't have a steady growth Uh, which is uh, leading to an all round development and not only the last 3 years in fact we are pushed we are being pushed into recession and the covid pandemic is you know is a final blow on indian economy as far as current state of development is concerned so let's three uh, le let's uh, look at uh, the three uh, years last 3 years and also try to estimate uh, the current years uh, gdp estimates as, as per the economic survey the latest economic survey we have 2017 18 the gdp was at 7.2% 2018 19 it is 6.8% and 2019 20 it is 4.2% you know if you see a ministry of finance statistics it is mentioned as 6.1 the latest thing but anyway economic survey is also the latest one so i am going by economic survey and suggest you should also go by the economic survey as far as 2018 19 gdp is concerned so if you see last 3 years the gdp is uh, is uh, falling down from 7.2 pc to 4.8 pc and 2019 20 you know the figures were released by uh, national statistical organization in uh, uh, may uh, that that is the standard i am using here so this is the latest figure the 2019-20 gdp growth has been pegged at 4.2% so see what a fall from 7.2% to 6.8% from 6.8% to 4.2% and uh, 2020-21 is all to be a different ball game in uh, budget in her budget presentation union government of course budget is presented by finance minister right uh, miss uh, mrs nirmala sitaraman she said like this you know as you see the as you might be hearing the ambulance indian economy is also in the same size same situation you know we are in an alarming situation and indian economy needs urgent uh, attention like a patient in an ambulance which is passing through i could hear it i don't know whether you might be hearing or not so uh, the uh, according to the budget uh, presentations budget presentation we have uh, government has uh, estimated that a 10% gdp growth is uh, likely uh, in uh, indian uh, economy in current 2021 this was uh, in fib right february 2021 but friends already jan onwards we have the covid pandemic that is uh, simply uh, you know unleashing destruction across economies and societies of the world and india the impact was felt in march right so before march everything is good indian economy was almost like in a honeymoon and we thought things are moving one moving well so there could be some uh, green shoots that are coming up in the economy so they will become a real uh, growth 
but then friends the situation has become more alarming in the current financial year financial year begins from april 1st you know always it's like april fools day that's why most of the government programs don't kick off properly don't write like this in the examination but i'm just saying so we have uh, march itself the lockdown has started so the financial year has a bad uh, beginning and uh, according to see as we know you, we have all seen the lockdown you might be sitting sitting at home we are sitting at home doing the online classes and all that people are working from home the economic activity had come to a stand still uh, in the lockdown and even after the graded unlock you know unlock up to unlock 5 and 6 which we are witnessing now this month and next month the situation remained very very dicey so now what could be the impact you know if there is a uh, sudden halt of uh, economic activity what could be the impact on 2021 uh, gdp growth according to this imf latest uh, world economic outlook it is titled the report is titled as a long and difficult ascent okay india is one of the worst hit countries worst worst is hit economies because of uh, gdp and the economy would contract by uh, 10.3% you know in fact uh, this is a very very uh, significant number 10.3% is uh, very very significant number and because of the lockdown if everything is locked down if gdp is total value of goods and services purchased how do you have the value being generated with no production and friends this will trigger a cycle the cycle is that you know the companies are workers are uh, workers including people like white collar jobs everybody you know salaries cut and wages cut and all these things have happened salaries have been defined even by the some of the government state governments so Uh, the the not only production stopped the demand stopped inventories were uh, held in the midway receivables receivables means the money that is supposed to come for the businesses from other businesses that also got stopped uh, so uh, this has led to a contraction of uh, gdp even services you know for example you see the coaching and education institutions see, that is also service you see real estate and all consultancy everything has come to a stand still so uh, imf uh, estimated uh, a contraction of uh, indian gdp in the current financial year by uh, up to 10% now what about other uh, estimates we have uh, reserve bank of india rbi also brings out its own uh, gdp estimates right so uh, reserve bank of india actually in its uh, latest uh, monetary policy Uh, meeting i have not mentioned reserve bank of india but i am saying because the purpose of providing this is to give you an exact answer that you can write in the exam if this question comes so that you need not search here and there the moment you see the question you use this data but anyway if you can add if you want if you are writing fast and speed you can also add rbi so rbi uh, in its october uh, monetary policy uh, review mpc meeting of mpc meeting uh, according to rbi Uh, indian economy will contract uh, 9.5% in the fiscal year 2021 due to disruptions caused by covid pandemic you know as i said uh, everything was impacted okay the uh, second important thing is the uh, inflation if, if rbi also said if inflation is uh, within the target of 4% then the possible to it is possible to revive growth with a an accommodative monetary policy stance accommodative monetary policy stance means stance means the rates are not being increased okay so uh, it if it is inflation is remaining within the target of 4% then the growth might be revived that is what he said then in fact we have uh, not only imf not only rbi today if you have read the uh, newspaper uh, dr uh, c rangarajan who was a very uh, celebrated uh, economist okay <coughs> who was a very uh, celebrated economist he was saying uh, that uh, i don't know how many of you read today's newspaper she gave a big interview to the hindu business line newspaper 
So where he says uh, the contraction could be around 6% provided that uh, the revival of the economy as we see now is on the track. And uh, in fact, uh, you know, World Bank has also said uh, that 9.6% like I mean IMF, uh, it is a little lower than the IMF uh, prediction. And World Bank earlier said Indian uh, economy or India's GDP could come down by 3.2% uh, by 3.2% because of COVID. So all the estimates, all the estimates or this is what I mentioned here, all the estimates are actually in line with the most other economists. So India's economy would definitely contract in double digits and uh, you know this has been increased from earlier projections to a higher level. Now the point is, uh, the advanced world, how do we compare this with the global scenario? IMF says as far as recovery is concerned, even recovery could not be at a uniform pace across the global economy because it is not uh, India alone that was impacted by this uh, COVID. We have every economy, smaller or bigger, every economy was impacted. So uh, IMF says that uh, the advanced world is expected to contract less and developing countries including India could contract a higher uh, rate. The global economy was projected to degrow by 4.4% uh, in 2020 as against 5.2% earlier which means which means that uh, India is uh, now should brace to face a, a, a greater impact on its uh, economy and the numbers may vary you know but if you see first quarter itself in the first quarter that means March, April and May we have a, a whopping 23.9% uh, decline in GDP so how do we even if we have the growth now <clears throat> it would definitely offset the growth in the first quarter itself we are down by 23.9% and the second quarter is little improvement up to September ended we have little improvement of course the GDP figures for the second quarter is not at out but uh, it is expected advanced estimates say that it is expected to be uh, showing some improvement but the point friends the point is that GDP is bound to fall in India in 2021 now let us look at a overall perspective now last four years now is it first time that uh, we have uh, the GDP uh, decline as I said if we are saying from say uh, 2017 uh, 18 onwards we have a steady decline so COVID pandemic even before pandemic our uh, situation is at about 4% GDP growth rate so 7.8 uh, 7 percent over 7 percent to 4 percent even if you eliminate uh, disciples we almost have a 3 percent fall steady fall in GDP and of course COVID no doubt now everybody got an opportunity to talk about COVID we can say COVID because of COVID it has happened because of COVID it is not happening like that so let us see what are the general causes for uh, decline of India's GDP uh, in uh, recent years okay now the deceleration in GDP growth, deceleration is decline. It can be understood within the framework of a slowing cycle of growth with the financial sector acting as a real drag on the real sector, that is manufacturing sector. Okay, uh, because the corporate credit offtake, if you see the corporate credit offtake and the gross capital formation, GCF, I have not mentioned all this here. But if you are uh, saying this in the examination, the examiner will know that you are talking about all these things. But to explain you, I am telling this. So the corporate credit offtake, in fact, all the banks are now only focusing on retail lending, somebody buying a home loan, somebody uh, taking a home loan or buying a car or whatever. But corporate credit, corporate credit is not there, you know, because of rising NPS and all that banks are very shy, or shy to, they are shying off from giving corporate advances. So obviously, if the banks are not giving corporate advances, the growth cap capital formation will come down. Then supply side, all sectors except agriculture and allied activities 
and public administration, defense and other services. Except this, all other sectors are also facing supply side constraints because of uh, in the recent years. That is also causing uh, deceleration in uh, GDP. We also have to see the demand side. The decline in GDP growth was caused by a, a decline of growth in the real fixed investment, as I said. Okay. Now, of course, for the current financial year, that is 2021, we can always say uh, COVID is the fundamental cause. It is true also. The lag impact of the pandemic, the lag impact of the pandemic's adverse impact uh, may continue uh, well into the next financial year as well. It's not that, you know, uh, India's uh, GDP will now be uh, uh, very happy, you know, uh, that, you know, if this year is addressed, all that is not addressed. So there could be other concerns. The lag impact uh, will also be there in uh, subsequent uh, years, which we need to see. So it is in this context that what are the measures uh, being taken uh, by India or, uh, you know, the government First of all, the boosting of demand is very, very important. I have said already, if it is demand, then everything uh, is uh, picked up. You know, uh, Keynes, uh, very uh, famous monetary economist, had a simple mantra. He said, in the times of recession, uh, dig the pits and fill the pits. If you are not having anything, if you have no work to do, you employ call 100 people. Ask, the, ask them to dig the road from this place to that place, say one kilometer from morning to evening and again you fill the pits. So somehow employ, give work, give waste, waste generation. Waste employment is very, very important. Neraga, Neraga is one hope for India where the, the growth in Neraga can actually push up demand. That is one thing. Then uh, monetary policy, you know, in the recent uh, monetary policies, RBI uh, has cut repo rate uh, by 110 basis points. This is uh, very, very important because if the rates become cheaper, then there will be greater demand for loans and the greater demand for loans or will, uh, will spur, uh, you know, a work investment or demand, whatever you see. For example, if home loans are cheaper, you and me take home loans and buy. If loans are cheaper, uh, what will happen? Uh, industries can invest by taking bank loans. So these are the some of the important uh, points that we can take a cue from RBI's uh, easing of monetary policy. Then uh, government also taken uh, steps this year towards speeding up insolvency resolution process and insolvency and bankruptcy code IBC uh, as there have also been amendments as you could see so that the credit will be eased, uh, particularly for the stressed real estate as well as NBFCs, non-banking financial com uh, you know, uh, companies. Now, critical measures have also been, uh, the impact of uh, critical measures taken to boost investment is also in the national infrastructure pipeline. Uh, in 2019-20, we already got some green shoots because of this. However, the situation has been uh, totally altered by adverse impact of pandemic. Otherwise, the green shoots of 2019-20 uh, uh, would have become a real growth uh, drivers in this year, assuming that there was no COVID. Now that there is a COVID challenge, now government had also undertaken a paradigm shift. You know, a paradigm shift is undertaken by government so that uh, the, the COVID pandemic whatever, you call it as a stimulus package, you call it Corona virus package, or you call uh, Atma Nirbhar uh, Bharat Abhiyan, as mentioned as christened by government itself. You know, in May, May 12th, uh, Prime Minister uh, Narendra Modi ji has announced uh, this. And after that, of course, we have Ministry of Finance brought a series of press, uh, announcements in about five announcements. So what they have done is the, the Atma Nirbhar package is uh, directed at different uh, angles. One, uh, giving more uh, budgetary support for state governments. I am not going to do Atmanirbhar package. That's a uh, different topic for us now. But you need to take some points from that. About 21 lakh crore, approximately over 20 lakh crore, stimulus package is seen as being given under Atmanirbhar package. 
the state governments uh, were given more uh, uh, room to uh, get funds by permitting higher uh, fiscal uh, deficit we have uh, a lot of measures were taken by uh, to, to to promote msmes then we do have uh, pradhan mantri garib kalyan yojana which also gave some uh, respite to bank customers by various measures you know including uh, moratorium on loans the pf there was some relief up to august uh, in the pf employee employee provident fund payment both by the employees as well as employers so uh, we do have on the agri infra front you know agriculture now that uh, now the fact is that agriculture seems to be relatively less impacted by covid if at all we start growth uh, from triggering rural demand then obviously the entire economy might uh, start uh, uh, you know rotating again so friends uh, this is what uh, you need to understand for this uh, particular topic you know this you can expect a direct uh, question on this as i mentioned here uh, the question could be the question could be asked in different ways with little uh, changes tweaking a little you can use this uh, information now critically examine gdp growth in indian economy in recent years with relevant data then discuss trends in india's gdp for the last 3 years uh, and mention measures being taken to revive economy explain why there has been a fall in india's gdp of late what could be the impact of covid 19 on indian economy there could be some other questions say uh, related to balance between monetary and fiscal policy and gdp but that we see when we come to banking and other areas okay so uh, this is one important area friends and definitely even the current uh, scenario uh, it is a very very important uh, topic and this begins your proper understanding of current macro economic view of indian economy of course the pdf is also there uh, all of you can reach out to me for any uh, clarifications thanks we will take up other topic in the subsequent uh, sessions thank you